We said a week ago that the great ones have the ability that when the second season starts, their level goes through the roof. So all you naysayers, all you people out there who said, get rid of this guy. This guy knows nothing. Take him out behind the shed and put one on him. Deal with it, folks, because Mr. Lax is back in a big way. How'd I do? <laughs> wow. Well, uh, some of those naysayers were those people out in Rocky Point, and they tried to get inside my head with toughness and bravado, that Suffolk County approach. Let's beat them down. They begged me after not picking them time after time after time. They told me, don't pick us against Sayville. Nobody tells Mr. Lax what to do, like nobody has figured out a way to slow down Jackie Sullivan and Patty Dallin. The goalie was spectacular, thanks to PD. MQ, Mr. Lax, 1-0. We're going live with the RAF. Don't get so cocky. It's just one win. <laughs> we will see what he's saying at the end of this little shindig. Hey, so Rocky Point needed a, they needed an opponent. Who do they get? Well, thanks to J.C. Guido, the unbelievable goalie who had a monstrous save with his team up one, they hold on to beat Comsawag, the defending B champs. Miller Place win it 6-5. They got a match, and now Mr. Lax is 2-0. It was a one-goal win. You got lucky. There is no such thing as luck, pal. Luck is the residue of hard work, and Mr. Lax has been in his laboratory. Section 1, Class B Championship, enough. We've heard it on and on and on. Yorktown, 37 sectional titles. Nice story, Byram Hills, but this was a big boy lacrosse event. Now Yorktown's got to figure out how to close the deal and win their first state title since 03. RAF, 3-0. Nice Yorktown pick. Is Kark happy for you? You bet he is. Kark should have been at the FCAC semifinals earlier this week. I don't know where he was, basking in his glory, I guess, of calling a championship game. Manhattan flat out. Listen, not a lacrosse power. They got a goalie coming in because this guy, Mike Zingaro, is quickly becoming one of my favorite players in the tri-state. You see what he did in the 10-goal victory against Mimarinik? Had 15 saves. Nobody cares about that. The big fella went the length of the field, had a goal. Way to go, Mikey. Way to go, Mr. Lax. You might be 4-0, but you're still not great. <laughs> Only time will tell. I was not 100% sold on Pleasantville. I thought Bronxville would run through them. What we got out of the Panthers was a team that is now on the upswing. Didn't win the game. Got great respect. Respect. Broncos out of the stables, their fourth C title in a row. Are you showing off because Katie is back in town? No way. She knows what Mr. Lax is all about. Uh, the AA New York Catholic League Championship. Listen, when Ford and Prep and Iona Prep to get together, you know Prep is going to win. And this time, it was Iona taking it away from Fordham, who won it a year ago in three overtime, 6-0. Unfortunately, I'm speechless. I can't stand it. Unfortunately, you're here and on Long Island in the AAA championship. It's the granddaddy, Chaminade St. Anthony's. Matt is nardy, going to Army next year. A spectacular young man, a great goalie. That's two in a row for the Flyers and seven in a row for Mr. Lax. I'm sorry, I'm on the phone. Did you go seven and zero this week? <laughs> Must be Lauren telling him to put on his big boy pants. Uh, seven and zero. That is, I mean, again, just three weeks ago, Mr. Lax was left for dead at one and seven. They were actually gonna put Devaney in here to do lacrosse and I was gonna do baseball. Woo! Stay on the diamond, Devaney. Mr. Lax is back. He is back in such a big way that the guys, Russ, Butler, Stack, they're like, how many more picks do you have for this season? I think 17. That means seven and zero. Oh, Plus 17 is 24. They wanted to know if I could get to 75%. Mr. Lax can't, but he's ending the year on a 24-0 win streak. Let's get it on. There are two unbeaten teams remaining in the Tri-State. One is Darianne, who just were magically 
getting into the championship game, down three with eight minutes left. We'll break that game down in a second. The other, Bergen Catholic. And Joe Hammerly has taken the corner of Ordell and Forrest by strength. This was known as a football school, a basketball school, a baseball school, a hockey school, a wrestling school. It was known for everything but lax. And the hammer, woo, has been getting it done this year. The problem is they go into this game against a Del Barton team that I wrote off at the beginning of the year. I did not like what they did against Summit in that wonderful defense back in March on a rainy day. Attack, attack, attack. They played back, played back, played back. When they decided to let the courses out of the barn, all of a sudden you saw magical things. Three losses this year. A one-goal loss to Summit, a one-goal loss to Chaminade, got beat by Galligan and the boys from St. Anthony's by five. What does it mean? Absolutely nothing. Because this is the day they play for. Tonight, Livingston High School, 7.30. I will be standing there right on the 50-yard line, and I will be looking dead down the pipe at the X. Because while some people think this is the non-public A championship, to me, it's the Mackey Bowl. And if you think Karen and John Mackey aren't buying into that, well, who are these Karen and John Mackey people? Well, they're the parents of Connor and Brendan Mackey. And if you're a lacrosse cat and you don't know what's happening tonight, where you been? Where you been? When Connor and Brendan come out, Connor the senior heading to Yale, Brendan the junior already verbally committed to Amherst, and both head coaches will be in attendance tonight at their future schools, they will get down on a knee, say, yo, bro, what's up? You think mom cooked a good breakfast? And then they're going to get it on. They will face off against each other in a magical lacrosse moment. Both have had spectacular years, and they will both split time at face-off. But if Rubling and Hammer do what we all hope, magical moment when the ball, when the ref drops the ball on the spot tonight. Both can win face-offs, both major parts of the offense. Connor, 26 goals, five assists this year. Brendan, 23 and 13. That's the game within the game, and now you gotta play. Now you have to play. Nobody in the history of New Jersey lacrosse has won more state titles than the Green Wave of Del Barton. Nobody. Bergen Catholic, they've won tons in football. Hammer, when he was assistant for the great Fred Stengel, was part of nine state championships. Hammer's never won one in lacrosse. Could tonight be that night? The last time they met, 2011, the game wasn't close. Wasn't close. Del Barton rolled them. Absolutely rolled them. And what you like, game within the game, the Mackey Bowl. Game within the game, the best offense Bergen Catholic will see this year. Del Barton will see in Bergen Catholic the best defense they've seen all year. We go on and on and on about Michael Riley, Chris Blewett, Matt Hammerly, the Tack Hammer. Wonderful offensive players who have averaged just under 14 goals per game this year. But now they have to look into the teeth of a green wave that is downright nasty, downright mean. And these three guys back there, and they have help. But when you talk about Chad Otterman, Peter Welsh, and Aaron Slotowitz, bad dudes. I mean mean, tough. The amazing thing, Otterman's the best defensive player in the Tri-State, and he ain't even playing lacrosse next year. He's going to Cornell, and one day this cat may play in the NHL. Riley, Blewett, Hammerly, get used to seeing these guys. Tonight, if you love defense and you love aggressive players, take a look at number one on Del Barton. And then when you look on the other side of the defense, take a look at number one on Bergen Catholic because Kurt Haluba has taken his game to another level. So quite possibly, the best two players in this game tonight, think about this, high level lacrosse, there's gonna be no college lacrosse. Otterman, hockey in college. Haluba, football at Princeton. Fun game, very fun game. JJ McBride, listen, we're not supposed to root, but I always root for the McBrides. I love that family. They're special people. When you have a job like this, one of the great things is, is when you meet parents that are fun. And those people are fun. Emmett Caudry, very good. Jordan Doiak, very good. My man, Will McCarthy, very good. Jake Crowley, very good. 
You listen to what I'm saying, Haluba? Casey Heffernan, a tremendous defense as well. This game, to me, comes down to one guy. One guy. And if you saw what they did against St. Augustine, the only reason Bergen Catholic is playing tonight is because of the play of senior goalie Matty Pedrick. He was flat out spectacular in the second half of that game. Spectacular. They come back, win the game 9-7. Oh, by the way, their offensive firepower that day, Kurt Haluba, the pole, two goals. Hammer, give a, let him run around. Take one of those middies, put him on the other side of the field tonight, and let Haluba go run down there and play a little midi attack. Be fun. Be fun. Seton Hall ended Del Barton's year a year ago, and for a while it looked like the Pirates in the semifinals may do it again. Third quarter, tie it at four. Uh-oh. But what I saw, watching the highlights, talking to Kenny, breaking it down, I saw a different reaction from Del Barton. They didn't get tight. They got mad. They didn't get tight. They got mad. And they played loose and free. They scored the last five goals, run out of the place, a 9-4 winner. Whew. I'm excited. I, 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 it's going to be fun. Bergen Catholic has been to the finals twice. They've never won one, ever. Lost in 06, lost in 08. Hammer has been coaching the Crusaders for 20 years. And it's time. It's time Bergen Catholic hangs a banner in that wonderful gym they have that says 2014 state champs. They are unbeaten this deep into the season. They have played Del Barton six times in their history in the postseason. They're 0-6. They have played them five times in the regular season. They're 0-5. You do math, 0-6, 0-5, that's 0-11. So Bergen Catholic is 0-11. One of the great movies of all time, The Dirty Dozen. And it will be for Bergen Catholic. Put a face on the green wave. The unbeaten streak comes to an end tonight in the non-public A final. Please don't anybody tell Haluba that I picked against him. He's too big. I gotta get out of there. I would hate to see him take a swing at me in front of my daughter Katie when we're at the game tonight. Hit Cavallo, a non-public B championship. Immaculata, Mo Beard. Morristown Beard. You know, they don't play the sexy schedule of a lot of these teams, but what gets into my head is what they did in the Morris County semifinal against Del Barton. Del Barton almost didn't have an opportunity to win the title this year against Mountain Lakes because Mo Beard almost beat him. Mo Beard lost 8 7. You know, Mr. Lax puts a lot of weight in competition and he looks at losses and weighs them heavily. Good loss. This is a very, very good defensive team that have a couple of cats that can score. The reason they got by Pingree, Tommy Rago, the junior attack, got the game winner. How about this guy? 88 goals, 57 assists. Mo Beard may be built to win this thing next year, but they're here now. Why? Because they have another junior attack in Teddy Hatfield, 88 goals, 78 assists. Woo! They must have to do stats with a calculator at Mo Beard. These are big numbers. I'm a little worried about Immaculata because in a couple of games this year, especially after they had beaten Ridge early in the year, the defending Tournament of Champions winner in the Somerset County Final, when it counted most, they lost. And what happened after that loss was alarming to me. Then they got their heinies handed to them by a very good St. Augustine team. So they were in a little bit of a blip, but now they got it rolling again, rolled over Bishop Eustace. This Immaculata team is not happy. Why? They don't like Morristown Beard. Here's why. Because Mo Beard knocked him out of this tournament a year ago in the semifinals. In the semifinals. And I can guarantee you this, Mo Beard probably all week kept saying, when the kids would go to bed tonight on defense, last night on defense, Vanderbeek, Vander what? what? Here's why. These Vanderbeek boys are insane. They really are. When you add up what Connor, Chandler, and Griffin have done this year, one family, 116 goals and 37 assists. Wow! Face-off will be key in this game. Key. Trevor Baptiste 
for Mo Beard, he's great at the X. And then he stays on, and he's great when he stays on. 38 and 21. Paul Wasimowicz for Immaculata. May just be the best Fogo in the state. He gets it, gets it to an attack, and gets the heck off the field. This game has a lot of firepower. It, it doesn't have the sex appeal of the A championship. Good game. Good game tonight. Tonight. Mo Beard last won the title in 2008 against Immaculata. They're meeting up again. Mo Beard ain't getting another one. Put a face on the kids from Somerville. Mr. Lax would love as he sat in his little Lax laboratory trying to figure out a way to say something exciting about this next game. Couldn't find anything. Let's get it on! Hey, let's give A.L. Johnson some credit, okay? How many teams in the course of a season lose six consecutive games, win a couple, lose four more? That means they have made it to the championship at sub-500 at 10 and 11 with a six-game losing streak and a four-game losing streak. You know what you know. And these guys, it's like, hey, we got house money. We got house money. But tonight, it will be Monopoly money. It won't be real. I just don't see how it's possible. I, when you look at the cooch, when you look at Brad Smith, Zach Lesko, Mountain Lakes won this title a year ago. Everybody thought it was going to be Rumson. And Mountain Lakes struggled to win that game last year, 8-6. I don't think any team in the state caught a bigger break on Championship Wednesday than the Lakers and Coach Flynn's guys. The last time Johnson played in a state title, they lost in 1990. Put a face on the Lakers. I'm sorry, I got nothing. Um, Somerville Summit. This is the first time that they will ever meet. Not in the playoffs, not in the regular, first time. Somerville is building a program. Hey, the last two years, they've played in the group two final. This game tonight, they've played in it and they've lost to Chatham. What did I say, Chatham? Oh boy, oh boy. Chatham handed Summit their only loss of the year. 5-4 in double overtime. That means if the Hilltoppers could have figured out a way back in early April, they'd have an unbeaten record going into this game. And what bothers Davidson's kids the most is they didn't even get to this game last year. They got knocked out by Chatham in the semifinals. This is going to be a very, very difficult game for Somerville to win. Very difficult. Here's why. Against Immaculata in the Somerset County semifinals, they were shut out. That is a very difficult thing to do, especially when Somerville has kids like Holy Cross bound Logan LeBlanc, who is a wonderful player and a magician with the stick. He's gonna have to be David Copperfield tonight. He is going to have to be the magic man and he's gonna to have to be pulling teammates out of the hat as well. This is a very, very difficult game for Somerville going up against the best defense in the tri-state that allows not one, two, only three goals per game. The Hilltoppers have won four out of their last five appearances in the state championship. Make it five out of six, put a face on Davidson's kids. Group three. A lot of people thought Shawnee was going to get to the championship from down south, come up 95, 287, boom, bang in there the championship tonight, then Moorestown had other ideas, beat them by a goal. Moorestown, what you have in this game in the group three final is two teams with seven losses. Do a little bit of research, common opponents, both Ridge and Moorestown, both Ridgewood and Moorestown lost to Ridge. Ridgewood beat Hunterdon in Central, Moorestown lost to Hunterdon in Central. What Mike Pounds, the wonderful head coach for the Maroons, has got to get out of his team is consistency. They have been, it's almost like Ridgewood is based out of Coney Island because they've been the cyclone this year. They're up, they're down, they're up, they're down, they're close, they lose, they win a close one. You 
play the regular season for nights like this. Last week, or in the semifinals, they rolled over Morristown. Change a couple of the vowels and a couple of the consonants, and you get Morristown in the final. And when you have seniors at Ridgewood like Owen Smith, Andrew Sider, Oliver Sapel, and Matty Shippey, they ain't losing tonight. Put a face on Pounds' kids. Well, if you were up at Brian McMahon last night, you saw a wonderful night of lacrosse. We have gone on and on, Cavallo and I, all year about how the FCX semifinal would be the best semifinal matchups in America. Well, what did you get? You got Darianne and New Canaan, who played in the regular season to overtime, going to overtime last night. You've got Ridgefield and Greenwich, who played to four overtimes in the regular season, going to overtime last night. What you got in Greenwich and Darianne this morning was two coaching staffs and a bunch of kids going, whew, boy, we snuck that out. Let's get it on. And what I mean by that is Greenwich was done. The hay was in the barn. Ridgefield had him. It was over at the half, 5-1. And then magically, Ridgefield decided they weren't going to shoot the ball a lot in the second half. And not like Greenwich got a ton of shots, but when they did against that magical Ridgefield zone defense, they made them count. They took eight shots, I think, in the second half of that game. Six went in. And Kyle Foote's fourth goal of the game in overtime put the Cardinals on the bus and told everybody at Jack Cassegrand Field, go home. No more lacrosse here tonight. These two teams played in the regular season. Darianne gets to the championship tonight because they have that mentality of we have something very special going here this year. They were left for dead at 11 to 8 with 8 minutes left in regulation. And then something got in to the blue wave. Oh, that championship pedigree maybe? They will look for their first FCAC title, a mind-boggling, since 2011. New Canaan won the last two and they were primed to go back for a third. And then the blue wave got their mojo going. Ian Burgoyne. Let me tell you something about Ian Burgoyne. Not only is he a wonderful lacrosse player, he is one of the nicest young men in 27 years I've ever spoken to. If you don't believe me, watch Quick Hits Connecticut. This guy will be a state senator someday after he fulfills his commitment to the United States Navy. He's only a junior. Braymeyer has him back another week. Braymeyer got his 500th last Friday against McMahon. His 501st is one of the sweetest victories he's ever had. He's ever had. Down three with eight minutes left. They met in the regular season. It was a 4-3 game at the half. It looked like it was going to be a classic. A classic back in May. And then Darianne coming out of the locker room left Greenwich in their wake. Get out of here. Get out of here. And that was the moment when you said, could this be, could this be a team that runs the table? Does this Braymeyer group have what the 05 group, I think, had? An undefeated pedigree? I don't know. There's still a lot of lacrosse to be played. You almost think that both teams got a call from the governor last night, stay of execution. I know this right now. I've watched my man, Mark Ivanchek, and I sat with his little brother, David, behind the goal. This cat, David, in Darian Luth Youth Lacrosse this year, scored 14 goals in a game once. He's the offensive guy in the family. Big brother Mark, he's a tremendous pole. Kyle Foote, get ready, because 41 is going to be coming at you. They put him on the best player, and they let him go. Going to be hard to get four goals. Foote will figure out a way. Fun cat to watch, going to Loyola. What Darianne and Braymeyer have to get out of Peter Lindley, who is like without, if Peter Lindley was a basketball player, he'd be on the AAU circuit, the and one tour. He is one of the most crafty shooters you'll ever see. Gotta be consistent. Can't get him three, then go away a little bit, and then come back. He needs a consistent 48. Gotta have it. 
Gotta have it. Greenwich is in the final for the second consecutive year. They lost to New Canaan last year. We said it before in the regular season. The face-off X will be paramount in this game. Mike Sullivan, Andrew Puglis. Two wonderful, wonderful face-off artists. Wonderful. We know, you know about all the guys on Darien. We've gone on and on. Minikis is quickly turning into one of my favorite players in the Tri-State, the little big man. That means he's going to get to know Nails and Harrington in a big way. Identify three, identify four, Niffin. Identify seven, Reed. Identify 14, Cornell. Ugh. Identify five, Gillespie. They got so many guys. And when Greenwich took the lead yesterday, I kind of out of the corner of my eye saw the Darien guys who I think had come back after they went home. <laughs> applauding. Does that mean Darien wanted Greenwich more than Ridgefield? Maybe they didn't want to play against that zone. Tommy Rogan, the reason Greenwich is playing, Rogan made huge saves. At 5-1, he made a save at the end of the half that was spectacular. Made a couple of saves in the third quarter on the rare shot that the Tigers took. Rogan's the reason they're playing in the championship game. Phil Hufford, I've watched Darian a lot this year. Their goalie going to Yale next year. He was off his game early. Late when they needed him, he was there. Goalie matchup, fun. Face-off matchup, fun. Avancic, Kyle Foot, fun. A lot of fun things about this game. Except if you're Greenwich. Put a face on Darian! Their first title since 2001. So the unbeaten streak continues. I think watching that game last night, the bugaboo of being undefeated is off Darian's back. They can breathe now. They can breathe. They faced the devil. And they got the devil. They got the devil. Guess who's back? Let's get it on. Oh, the big guy. He is back. Who is the big guy? Scotty Craig. One of the fun guys to be around. One of the masters of lacrosse. And he's in a bad mood. Don't make the big guy mad. Well, here's why. He's been mad for over a year now, probably almost two years. They had won nine consecutive Suffolk County titles in a row. And then the Patriots of Ward Melville said, move over, Lions, back in the cage, get back in. When Ward Melville had that magical year a year ago, number one team in America. Scotty Craig doesn't want to hear about that. He was the number one team in America for a whole bunch of years. And now, amazingly, and he had that twinkle in his eye, Back in early April, when they fell 8-6 to Chaminade and said to me, we're going to be okay. What? 1-4? and four? Yeah. All they did in their last 14 games is win 12. Their only two losses in double overtime and overtime. Otherwise, this is a team that's on a 14-game win streak if they could somehow have gotten a goal here and there in regulation. Tonight at 7.30, Stony Brook, they will be taking on Jason Lambert's Smithtown East team the preseason number three, who back when it was snowing out in March, late March, beat West Islip 10-6. They had never beaten West Islip until last year. Never, never, never. Then they beat them twice last year. Beat them once this year. There may not be a team in America, in America, in the last 12 years that has had a three-game win streak against West Iceland. You probably have to go back to the great Joe Cuso teams of Ward Melville to find out the last time West Islip lost to the same team three times in a row. Keep that in mind as we move on. Brian Willits, Danny Rooney, Joe Sajisi, Sajisi, Johnny Danny Jealous. We know about these guys. Who's this cat, Connor D. Simone? Where did Lambert find this guy? Freshman, four goals in the victory against Sachem North. Four, a freshman. Uh-oh, uh-oh. 
D. Simone's parents better get a bigger mailbox right away. All of a sudden, these colleges all over America are going to be sending stuff to the D. Simones. Asiri already knows where he's going. He's going to Penn State, and he was the guy that turned this game. North was up 8-6 at the half when Gerard said, enough, enough. Wins the first three face-offs of the second half. The Bulls got momentum and never looked back. Ran away with this thing, 17-11 in the second half. A Siri major factor, major factor. But here's the thing. The big guy, Coach Craig, loves his defense. Boy, there's a surprise. Team defense, blue-collar mentality, no guy bigger than the program. We're going to all get in there and do what we have to do. Ian Prate, Nicky Capone, A.J. Eichert, Greg Ponce, the goalie. I mean, these guys have come up time and time again where everybody wrote them off. Everybody. Everybody. They have gotten by in the playoffs. They've done what they've had to do. All you need to do is win by a goal. And they've done that twice and won by two once. Open the playoffs, beating Sachem East, 11-10. Ward Melville, 7-5 and then took down the top seed last week, Smithtown West, 8-7. Trevor Bovich, spectacular, three goals. Mikey Monahan, Colin Hitter, Kyle Ziegler, all great. All great. West Islip, how about that for Suffolk County historians? The preseason number six seed. What? How is that possible? Oh because they were 12-6 and six last year, didn't make it to the championship, and maybe a lot of coaches didn't believe in Scotty Craig's kids. He believed in them, and that's all that matters. Again, dusting off the archives, when is the last time a team beat West Islip three in a row? I have no idea. When is the last time a team beat them four times in a row? Maybe never. Until now, put a face on the Bulls! Suffolk B, 5 o'clock tonight, Stony Brook. The defending champs are back. Lizzie's guys have made it as the two seed and taking on Coach Bowler's 10th seeded Rocky Point team. Their only loss this year to Babylon, who, oh, by the way, congratulations to those guys. They're going to the C Championship of Long Island. They played on May 14th, and Rocky Point beat Miller Place 10-6. Justin Ray was spectacular. One goal, four assists. This guy, to me, is the best underrated player, and he's got the college scholarship and the whole thing, but this guy is a winner. He's a winner. Brendan Kane had three points in the victory against Miller Place. Jack Sullivan, one goal, two assists, faceoff wins. And Patrick Dallin. How many times are we going to talk about this goalkeeper? He had 16 saves in that game. He had 16 saves against Sayville, the 10-9 victory. And the only reason, Rocky points here, that game could have very easily gone to overtime. And his final of his 16 saves, the biggest, with 20 seconds left, allows them some breathing room to get here, to the big stage, the big stage. We've said it before, the face-off in this game, Christian Stalter and Jack Sullivan is going to be monumental. Monumental. Why is Miller place here? Well, they're a champion. They know how to win. When faced against adversity against Comsawag, they were able to get by. J.C. Guido, huge saves in this game, 16. But you know what the great ones do? They step up when it matters most. Eight of those 16 in the final quarter. They win the game 6-5. Chris Nielsen, wonderful. Jake Bonayuto, two goals, two assists, wonderful. Tommy Lee Antonio, wonderful. Liam Walsh, wonderful. Brett Osman, great athlete. And then there's my guy, Austin Yazarski. Anybody who has that look after the game like he just went out and won a football game, my type of guy. My type of guy. The ingredients are there for Miller Place, just like they were a year ago. And to win a championship, they're going to have to play very well. 
very, very well. Rocky Point had a magical year in 2008. That's the last time they won a state title. And when Mr. Lax gets into that computer and he tries to figure out the road to Hofstra this year, the only way you can get to Hofstra through Suffolk County is you've got to win the Suffolk County title. That means either the defending champs are going to Hofstra this weekend to take on the wonderful Owls of Lindbrook. What a story they've become. Or the team that won the whole thing in 2008. You can't win a state title without winning a Suffolk title. You can't hang a banner for a state title unless you can get off Long Island. And that first step is getting out in the Suffolk. Put on your party shoes, Rocky Point! Could be the year. And what I like about them is they've won a lot of close games this year. The games are going to be really, really fun this week. Oh, boy. I can just hear it. Mr. Lax, 7-0 and last week. And now people, there are people, unless I picked you, they are rooting for Mr. Lax to go down. So if you have a problem with me, let's talk about it. Guess what we're doing? Next Tuesday night, we will be live chatting. Let's talk it up. Let's get it done. Let's spread the word. We will stay here all night if you want. I will talk to you about anything except religion and politics. Other than that, everything is fair game. Everything. How does Mr. Lax, what's his laboratory look like? Is Cavallo still a great high jumper? Everything. Whatever you want to talk about, Mr. Lax is here to do it. So it'll be the night before we'll be able to break down all the Long Island championships. We'll be able to break down all the group championships in New Jersey. We'll be able to break down all the regional uh, championships up there in Section 1 because you know all these guys from Section 1 are heading up there. And then if you get to the overall state title, you have to win this. And what is this? This is what we're going to be televising this weekend from Hofstra. We know this, Massapequa was in and Craig Burge with that high ankle sprain at all had two and two last night as they rolled over Hicksville. We know Lindbrook's in, they beat Manhasset 8-4. We know Locust Valley's in, they upset Cold Spring Harbor. What we're waiting for is the guys from Suffolk. So let's get it on. And then Saturday, it will all start at one o'clock. We'll be live streaming all of those games. You can see them. And McCabe was all over me last night. I guess I inadvertently referred to Mr. O'Keefe as Max O'Keefe. Of course, it's Matt O'Keefe. And, oh, and let's see. He works with his daddy. So I got to get that right. I got to get that right. Well, that's it. Going to be fun. Make sure you're there tonight at 730 and get around the 50-yard line because the Mackey Bowl will be a lot of fun. Enjoy the games, everybody.